Income tax 2021-2022, taxes you paid, part number three. Get ready to get refunds to the max, diving into income tax 2021-2022. Most of this information can be found in the Schedule A Instructions Tax Year 2021 found on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov, income tax formula. We're focusing in on the itemized deductions, keeping them distinct in our mind from the adjustments to income, which you might hear called the above the line deductions, the deductions for adjusted gross income, the Schedule 1 deductions. When we look at the itemized deductions, we're always comparing and contrasting to the standard deduction because we would only be itemizing if the itemized deductions came out to be larger than the standard deduction. Typically, more well-off people are more likely for that to be the case and or people that own a home and have the big itemized deductions of the mortgage interest and the property taxes, possibly also living in high-income states uh, that have the higher uh, taxes as well. We're focused here on page one of the form 1040-12A, standard deduction or itemized deduction. We can see the standard deductions on the left-hand side, taking the itemized deduction if larger, itemized deductions then being attached to another schedule called Schedule A, which lists the major categories for the itemized deductions on the left-hand side. The total of Schedule A then pulling in to line 12A if greater than the standard deduction. And we want to have a general idea of the standard deductions, which are these amounts on the left-hand side. And then there's some variance, if over a certain age and or blind, that you could see on the right-hand side. If you have those general concepts in mind, then you can, you can answer people's questions a little bit more clearly when it comes to whether or not they're going to be benefiting from certain type of deductions that might fall into the itemized category. We're still focused here on the state and local uh, taxes and we're looking here at the real estate taxes now. So in prior presentations we looked at the state uh, and local taxes, the possibility to be able to deduct them, some of the ones we can deduct, some that we can't. Then we got into more of the into the weeds in terms of what kind of taxation is the state doing mainly to to basically do the, to fund the state in general, you will have usually an income tax or a sales tax as the primary tool or you might have some states that just like every kind of tax you know if you you know any tax so they have both they have all taxes but uh, then there's and so that's going to be the primary tax that you would kind of think of that's funding the state that could possibly be deductible on the federal side the other tax that might be in place is going to be the real estate tax so real estate tax is going to be a huge one because many people, their biggest investment being their home, have a significant you know, size in terms of value of the home. Therefore, the real estate taxes could be significant as well. So this is another one of those big items that you always want to be thinking. If someone has a home, then the two things that should come into your mind as a ta from a tax standpoint is, one, do they have interest, a mortgage on it? Pro most likely. How much interest are they paying on it? That interest could be a key factor to push them over to being itemizing, therefore having a more complex return. And two, what's going to be the property taxes on that property could be quite significant in terms of the property taxes, especially, and this is another area where if you're looking at property taxes in a high cost of living area where the homes just in general are higher, again, like California and New York, you would expect then that the, that the actual property taxes will be higher on those on those in those areas as well given your quite likelihood of going over to being able to benefit from having the itemized deductions being greater possibly than the standard deductions okay if you are a homeowner who received assistance under a state housing finance agency hardest hit fund program or an emergency homeowners loan program see publication 530 found on the irs website for the amount you can include on line 5b Enter on line 5B, state and local taxes you paid on real estate you own that wasn't used for business. So if it was used for business, then you might have the deduction basically somewhere else possibly. So for example, if it was a Schedule C type of business and you had some kind of real estate uh, taxes on it, possibly for, for uh, an office type of building or something that you're paying the taxes on, then you might have a deduction possibly on the Schedule C because it would be an, an expense that was used to generate the revenue for the business and then you wouldn't be putting it basically on the Schedule A. You can imagine a situation, by the way, you might be saying, well, what if I use part of my home 
for my business because I have my own home business as a sole proprietorship. In that instance, then you could have a situation where you're deducting some of the real estate taxes possibly on the Schedule C as something that's business related and some of them uh, and prorating some of them possibly on the Schedule A. So you can't double dip. You can't deduct them in both places like we've seen in the past, but you might be able to put take one on the other and there could be benefits to, to deducting them in one place or the other because if you deduct them, for example, on a Schedule C, then you might also have some implications for, you know, like the, the, the uh, self-employment tax, for example, and because some of the dedu deductions could be somewhat limited as uh, the itemized deductions, of course, have to be greater than the standard deductions and so on for the Schedule A. So back to the text here, but only if the taxes are assessed uniformly at a like rate on all real property throughout the community. That's usually the case, unless there's some uh, you know different thing going on for some reason, something funny is going on, and the proceeds are used for general community or government purposes. Again, that's generally the case, unless there's some kind of something unusual uh, going on. So publication 530 includes the deductions homeowners can take. You can look at publication 530 if something funny is going on and you want to you want to determine uh, if your deduction qualifies in those instances. Don't include the following amounts on line 5B. So not including foreign taxes you paid on real estate. So we're not including the foreign taxes. Itemized charges for services to specific property or person. So, for example, $20 monthly charge per house for trash collection, a $5 charge for every 1,000 gallons of water consumed, or a flat charge for mowing a lawn that had grown higher than permitted under a local ordinance. <laughs> that one gets a little bit picky. Hey, your grass is a little high over there. The local ordinance, any case, can't deduct those. Those are not the standard property. That's not a standard property tax type of situation. State and local real estate taxes. If your mortgage payments include your real estate taxes, you can include only the amount the mortgage company actually paid to the taxing authority in 2021. So if you're talking about uh, your mortgage payments as taking care of, to some degree, the property taxes, then you're going to see that generally on the statement that you will be receiving. It will typically be breaking out the deductible components that you paid, you know, in your mortgage, the deductible components not being the principal of the loan payment being paid back, but possibly the mortgage interest. And we'll talk about interest in a future presentation. And then possibly if they've included the property taxes that you're paying through you know, the mortgage process, then those will typically be broken out separately as well. And that's just depending on the structure on the mortgage. Obviously, the mortgage is, gen is, is structured to be a loan in general. So you're paying back the loan, which would be the interest and the principal on the loan, the interest being kind of the rent on the loan. But you might also have them taking care of basically facilitating the payment of the property taxes, which isn't really related to the loan, but is something that could possibly be deductible. And it's kind of nice if they do it because they'll they'll give you uh, the breakout typically on the statement. So it should be pretty easy for data input, although, you know, you don't it depends on how much you're going to pay for that. You know, does it is it. Does it make sense to do that through the mortgage company? So in any case, if you sold your home in 2021, any real estate tax charge to the buyer should be shown on your settlement statement and in box six of any form 1099S you received. This amount is considered a refund of real estate taxes. See refunds and rebates later. Any real estate taxes you paid at closing should be shown on your settlement statement. So when you're having an actual exchange that is taking place, then it can be a little bit confusing. You might have to dive into the weeds a little bit more, possibly looking at the closing uh, statements to see what happened with regards to uh, the real estate taxes. And, and that'll give you a better comprehensive or understanding on who paid the real estate taxes and basically who should be deducting possibly the real estate taxes in those instances. Uh, in those cases, you might have to dive into a little bit more detail just to make sure that uh, you have the reporting properly reported and allocated in those cases you must look at uh, you must look at your real estate tax bill to decide if any non-deductible itemized charges such as those listed earlier are included in the bill if your taxing authority or lender doesn't furnish you a copy of your real estate tax bill 
ask for it. So you're typically going to have a bill with it. Notice that some of these itemized deductions, if they're not going through, say, your mortgage company, you're not going to have the same kind of documentation, which is going to say, hey, this is a tax documentation, right? It, all you're going to have is the actual amount that you paid. And typically, you'll have a, a, a bill that will be fairly straightforward that oftentimes you pay pays possibly twice a year, which is fairly common, but it'll depend on the place that you are at at and it'll also depend on when when they're going to be calculating or when those payments are going to be generally made for what time periods they're making the assessments for and when uh, the tax is going to be due that could change from locality to locality and obviously if there's a real estate transfer or transaction sale or purchase then you've got the whole closing documents and who's who's uh, being in charge of the real estate taxes that are owed at that point in time and so on and so forth which again can be a little bit uh, a little bit more confusing. You got to dive in and see uh, that in a bit more detail as well. So that just means that the real estate taxes in general, when someone owns a home, when you get into the itemized deductions, it's likely that you're going to have some things, more and more things for usually more well-off people that are not specifically just driven by data input documents like a W-2 form or 1099. Okay, prepayments of next year's property taxes. Only taxes paid in 2021 and assessed prior to 2022 can be deducted for 2021. So note here, we're talking about a deduction and usually for individual taxes, there it's a cash-based system. So you actually had to pay the taxes. It's not like when they assessed the taxes. That would be an accrual system. They assessed it, but I didn't pay it. They assessed it in 2021 and charged me, billed me, but I didn't pay it till 2022. That kind of situation, when, when do I take the deduction? Usually when you paid it. But you can also see a situation, what if I prepay my deduction in 2021? If I prepaid it, then I should get the deduction. And that's they're going to limit that. The IRS is going to limit that because they're afraid that people will abuse the prepayment kind of situation if they have cash flow and they prepay too much. They're going to get the deduction in the current year. It's only a timing difference, but they'll get the deduction in the current year as opposed to uh, the following year. And if you let that kind of thing get out of control, that can be a pretty substantial distortion. So, so that's where you got the limits that are that are going in there. Again, it, it's usually pretty straightforward. But you can imagine someone coming up with a tax planning strategy and say, well, what if I pay five years of my property taxes, you know, today and I prepay it, and I get this big expense today because I want to lower my tax bill at this point in time or something like that. So state or local law determines whether and when property tax is assessed, which is generally when the taxpayer becomes liable for the property tax imposed refunds and rebates. If you received a refund or rebate in 2021 of real estate taxes you paid in 2021, reduce your deduction by the amount of the refund or rebate. So we got the same kind of situation we've seen in the past with these tax situations. If you've got if you got a rebate, the money back, and it happened in the same year that you made the payment, then then you can just lower the taxes. It's going to be a problem when you have the cutoff date. What if you got the re what if you paid the taxes in 2021 and then you got the rebate in the following year, the money back, kind of like a refund after the following year. So if you received a refund or rebate in 2021 of real estate taxes you paid in an earlier year, don't reduce your, your deduction for the amount. So now you're saying, OK, I paid property taxes, let's say in 2020 and I took the deduction for it, got a benefit and then I got a rebate, some of the money back in 2021. What do I do? Do I need to go back to the prior? These are the options that would make sense. I go back to the prior year and fix my deduction for the prior year for the amount that I actually got that I didn't get a rebate for. No, that would be too burdensome to do. I can lower my current year deduction by the amount that I got that I got back. Well, you could do that. That would be pretty easy. But no, that's not what they want to do. And they want to put it possibly in income, just like with the refund on the state side. So if you got a benefit from it last time last year, and then you got it refunded this year, then maybe you have to include it in income. That's how you fix kind of that timing difference problem. So instead, you must include the refund or rebate in income on Schedule 1, Form 1040, Line 8Z, if you deducted the real estate taxes in the earlier year and the deduction reduced your tax. See recoveries in Publication 525. You can find that on the IRS website for details on how to figure the amount to include in income. 
Uh, state and local personal property taxes enter on line 5C, the state and local personal property taxes you paid, but only if the taxes were based on value alone and were imposed on a yearly basis. Example, you paid a yearly fee for the registration of your car. So here's the car registration, which is a often a kind of a confusing example because you got like part of it that may be deductible. And oftentimes people just basically deduct, you know, the whole thing. But in general, this is how this is the example. You paid a yearly fee for the registration of your car. Part of the fee was based on the car's value and part was based on its weight. You can deduct only the part of the fee that was based on the car's value. <laughs> and so you got to kind of parse that out a bit. So prepayment of next year's property taxes, only taxes paid in 2021 and assessed prior to 2022 can be deducted for 2021. So once again, only taxes paid in 2021 and assessed prior, uh, prior to 2022. So you can't like say, I'm just going to prepay, you know, five years of, I'm just going to pay out a bunch of taxes, right? And to have this big prepayment that I'm going to try to deduct in the current year. And then, you know, so state and local, uh, local law determines whether and when a property tax is assessed, which is generally when the taxpayer becomes liable for the property tax imposed. Other taxes enter only one total on line six, but list the type and amount of each tax included. Include on this line income taxes you paid to a foreign country uh, and generation skipping tax, the GST, imposed on certain income distributions. So these are less common kind of other taxes down below. You may want to take a credit for the foreign tax instead of a deduction. So if you're dealing with someone that has like a foreign income, then once again, as a tax preparer, you're going to be saying, do I want to be picking up people that have foreign income? Do I want to do I want to do that? Or do I want to be specializing on more basic returns? Do I want to be specializing on returns that are in my area on one state, for example? Or do I want to have multiple states, which can add a pretty significant level of complexity depending on, you know, their activities in multiple states? Do I want to include business and different entity business related? Do I want to include people that have income that are out of the country entirely, which in that case, you have to determine, you know, is it better for me to be able to take a deduction or possibly a credit in that case? So, you, so if, and you might specialize in those cases, you might say, I specialize in cases where I have, I have no people that have foreign income and current income, and that might be the area that you, that you specialize in. But uh, you want to, so then you could dive into that in more detail. Don't include taxes you paid to a U.S. possession on this line. Instead, include, include U.S. possession taxes on the appropriate state and local tax line. Don't include federal state tax on income in respect of a decedent on this line. Instead, include it on line 16.